Hello everyone. Uh, I don't really know how the audio will sound. I am working with new recording equipment, by that I mean a new phone, because if you don't know, I've always recorded on my phone. And I just got a new one. That is partial reason to why I haven't uploaded in like, last time I checked it was 10 days ago, which is upsetting to me again. I will not be continuing Phoenix Deku, Phoenix Deku, yeah. Simply because I don't feel like re-downloading the picture that I made for that. Because although, yes, I thought everything was backed up, everything was not backed up. So I'm going to have to go through, find any of the pictures I want, and have them backed up. So anyway, uh, this is what if Deku had Ruler's Authority. I was going to do this, like, a month or two ago, or I completely forgot. No, I think I tried and just didn't. It's a simple, simple... What if that I was thinking to make overpowered, which I could easily do, but I decided to go the simple route. Now, without further ado, uh, actually, one more thing. I hope you guys have been doing well. I hope you continue doing well. Uh, continue doing well. But so I need to start practicing tongue twisters because each time I try and say something, I just stumble over my own words. Anyway, hope you have all been doing well. Let's go ahead and get into this. What if? Deku had grown up for the majority of his young life quirkless, and in a society filled with the superhuman, not even superhuman, but the super, with super strength, super speed, the ability to manipulate light, electricity, even to generate, manipulate, and shoot out fire, water, and so on, the different quirks and what they could do were simply amazing, and to be a part of the small 20% of the world where you weren't born with this unique and special power was, well, pretty downing. It was pretty bad for young Izuku Midoriya, who was eventually dubbed Deku, or useless, by his once and now bully, Bakugo Katsuki. Now, Deku was expected to have one of his parents' quirks, a mixture of the two, or, if by chance, a weird mutation. But simply put it, he had never developed one. It's not that he was just quirkless. No matter what they did, the scans showed that he was supposed to develop a quirk and just never did. So... Although small, there was a chance he would develop a quirk, but no one cared. Or at least no one other than his mom and dad. Though his dad didn't really get to show it much because he worked, well, abroad, earning money in a different country. Now, Izuku was bullied, he was tormented, and he was torn down. Everything that amazing he did was downplayed, and every little thing anyone else did was put on a pedestal especially Bakugo. Now, we would skip through the years of Izuku, and we would go to when he's 14. He had yet to still awaken any form of quirk, but just the idea that he would get one motivated him to keep going forward. But he had changed from his young, shy, timid, well, self. He n no longer tried, you know, being nice to people, or at least... He just, he wasn't shy or timid, he just was a loner. Didn't care what people thought, didn't care what they said or did. He just ignored them. If they hit him, he didn't care. If they spat on him, he didn't care. He was, well, decently tall, average height for his class, his grade, and somewhat of his, well, weight. And there was nothing really special about him. Just kept to himself, did his work, but that didn't stop people from bullying him. The out-of-sight, out-of-mind thing didn't really work because he, well, wasn't out of people's sight, and most of them, who thought little of themselves, could boost their own very tiny ego by messing with Naku. The only person in there who didn't have a tiny ego, but instead had a massive one the size of Jupiter, was Bakugo Katsuki, his old friend, now tormentor, bully, and so on, who always believed himself to be better. Now, on this specific day, their teacher would come in a bit late, only a few minutes, and would have a massive stack of papers. The teacher would go on to say that he knows, or uh, that he, 
uh, is going to have them start focusing on their careers, what they're going to be doing, and how they can start learning certain things to, well, be ahead and get ahead to get to that spot. But then he throws the papers all into the air, saying that he all knows, or he knows that all of them want to be heroes. Of course, everyone starts cheering and showing off their quirks, but two don't. One being, of course, Izuku, because there is no quirk to show off, and the other being, well, Bakugo. Not because he didn't want to show off, no, he's gonna, but he's gonna do it in the most over-top ways. The teacher would be trying to get them to calm down, only for Bakugo to, out of nowhere, jump on his desk and tell the teacher not to lump them, or not to lump him in with them, saying that he's gonna be the top, and yada yada, and be the next All Might, you know, be better than All Might, and so on. That's when the teacher drops, in a sense, a bombshell for everyone, and that is that Izuku is also joining the way, like Bakugo said he was going to do. Deku, of course, hearing this, wouldn't care, but to try and throw a little of the heat, a little of the heat off of him that the teacher had just dumped on him, basically throw him into a volcano, was that the, he would say that because he is pretty smart, that the general ed classes there are pretty decent, and it has some of the best protection in, well, Japan. So yeah, and he said this in a tired, drawn out voice. That of course would get some of them to understand and not really care, but some of them would still laugh, thinking that Yue would still not take a quirkless Deku like him. Bakugo, of course, still doesn't want Deku going to Yue, even if it's just for the general ed. He doesn't think Deku should go to any hero school at all for any reason. Now, he of course would make this known at the end of class when he goes to take one of Deku's uh, notebooks, but Deku would of course grab it before he could. Now, Deku would be ready to leave, but Bakugo, you know, still knowing, or at least thinking that Deku still wants to be a hero, which he does want to do, but simply doesn't know how he should do it, tells him that he knows a way for him to get a quirk, and that is to take a swan dive off the roof. Now, of course, Deku hears this and this angers him, but he doesn't show it. Deku had done a lot of stuff to, well, train his mind to not react to the things that Bakugo says or anyone else says or does. A lot of meditation, a lot of breathing exercises, just dealing with Bakugo and letting the emotions build up and letting them just go away over time was the best way for him to do something like this. And it built up in a sense, his mental strength. Of course, once it got to a breaking point, it would be bad, but it never did. He was always able to let his mind, his body, everything relax and expel any of the, well, built up and pent up, well, emotions or, yeah, just pent up emotions and stress and just let them go. Then they would refill, pushing them to a higher limit and then stopping, pushing, stopping pushing until the limit kept getting higher and higher. Now, Deku had dealt with nearly a decade of this, and his mental limit to how much just crap he could take had been pushed to an all-time high for just about anyone. No one could probably take as much, well, mental berating as he could. Now, of course, Bakugo would laugh, so would the people who were following him, but Deku wouldn't care. He'd walk home, deciding just to get home quickly to do his homework and just relax. Now, he would go, and as he's going under an underpass, or whatever it's called, a, a bridge or whatever, something would, well, envelop him from behind. It would be green, it would smell, and it would say in this almost gargly like voice that Deku would be in a decent meat suit. And although Deku has his ears covered, he can kind of hear the muffled gargle voice say that he didn't know he was here. Not referring to Deku, but someone else. He th thinks that he has roughly a minute, but this is where, for the first time in Deku's life, of course, something would happen. Deku would want to fight. He isn't just going to let this happen. He, he'll be bullied. He'll be berated. He'll be mentally insulted and so, or, you know, be mentally broken down, physically broken down. But he's not just going to let someone suffocate him. And what did he say? Take over his body? No, he's not going to let that happen. So of course he fights back. But Deku, 
he isn't a mountain of muscle. He has the, I guess, average amount of muscle for someone who doesn't work out, who is his age and size. So he's pretty weak, but he keeps fighting. He keeps going, and as he's about to pass out, he's like, no, because he's thinking, you know, for a second, who's going to be sad? None of his classmates are going to be sad. They're probably going to be like good riddance, but then he thinks about it. His mom, his dad, but then he goes back. His mom. His mom's going to be sad. She's going to worried. She's going to be worried for months until they f eventually figure out what happens to him. And once he's declared dead, it's going to break her. It's probably going to break her before that even happens. And he's not going to let that happen. No. The only reason he kept, you know, just taking as much of the abuse as he has was because he was pushing on so that he could be there for his mom. Like his mom had been there for him. So, he would keep fighting until, well, from his body, this energy, this green, almost wispy-like energy would start to form just a thin layer around him before then expelling outward. It was a small, you know, expel. Very small. But it was enough to get the sludge off of him and to allow Deku to fall forward. But as he's falling, you know, he had, you know, run out of oxygen. His brain had given out. He's out cold. He doesn't even hear the voice, you know, that came out of nowhere saying, do not fear because I am here. That being All Might. All Might would, of course, have then thrown one punch, blown apart the already somewhat startled and blown apart villain from Deku's, whatever Deku did, and then captured him in a, well, not a, but two uh, liter bottles. Now two one liter bottles or whatever it is, I'm not sure. Now, of course, he'd look at Deku, wondering if he's okay, and would check that he's still breathing, he's fine. He's like, I should probably take him to the hospital, at least wait till he wakes up, but he knows that he doesn't have much time, and that he's not sure how long these bottles can last, so he decides to head off, and he runs to the nearest police station, or not really runs, but jumps into the city, and will go to the nearest police station to have this guy, you know, booked and processed. Nearly a minute later, Deku would wake up, taking any massive, well, uh, breath of air, and would realize he's fine, he's okay. He's wondering what happened, and, you know, it's at first foggy. He takes roughly five minutes to catch his breath, to check if everything's fine, and in those five minutes, it all starts coming back to him. First, school day, then at the end of the day, what happened with Bakugo, him walking, and then out of nowhere, this sludge coming out, it's smelling, tasting awful from the amount that got into his mouth, what it was saying, and then, you know, at the end, he could see it only just barely and feel something expel from his body. He's wondering if that was his quirk, but then he's wondering, was the villain? They It clearly would have, you know, taken him over. He's not sure. Now, though, this is where Deku would just decide to head home. He'd head home, but again, something else happens when he's heading home. He almost feels as though not feels as though, but can feel stuff around him, stuff moving, stuff that's still, and he could feel it around him, and some stuff is even almost like pulling towards him, or more like he's pulling it towards him, he's not sure, he just keeps getting these weird feelings, now of course he'd make it home, and as he's making it home, he'd say he's fine, that he just, you know, stopped at the park for a couple of minutes, to uh, get some fresh air, and then, you know, got home because he is a bit late. Now, he'd go to his room, he would start doing his homework, and later that night, he'd be in his room. He doesn't know what to do, but he still wants to be a hero. He's questioning what happened earlier that day. Now, he would go to set down his phone as he was just looking through some articles on the news, some hero events that happened. Apparently, All Might was sighted, you know, flying through the air, really as some people say, jumped through the air, because he jumps from the ground and just, you know, keeps going into the hill until he lands somewhere. But All Might was spotted in his city, which surprised him. He didn't even get to see him, sadly. Which, you know, All Might is still his favorite hero. Him still being a fanboy, but able to hide it. Now, he'd go to set his phone down, and as he sets it down, he would just let his hand fall to his side. But him being him, he didn't realize that he put his phone on, basically... On the edge of his desk it being a slightly over and him letting his hand just fall causes the phone to fall now of course on 
instinct and just reaction, he goes to reach for it, but it's out of his reach. But it does stop. It stops, and there's this almost wispy-like energy around it. And he's... He's confused. He's wondering what's going on. And then he realizes, I have a quirk. But then he also realizes, he hasn't been breathing for like half a minute, and takes in a bunch of air. And it all comes to him. His quirk. He activated his quirk. Now, of course, he realizes it's just like his mother's, or at least somewhat similar to his mother's. Some form of telekinesis, where his mom is able to push stuff, or not push stuff, but pull stuff towards her, and that's really it. If he did, if this was his quirk, and that's what happened to the sledge villain earlier, he pushed her away, and then he also just stopped his phone from falling, which at now is still on the ground because he had accidentally let go. And he's trying to do it, and... After nearly five hours of doing it, it being really late into the night, thankfully he doesn't have school tomorrow, he would, you know, start moving his phone centimeter by centimeter and eventually inch by inch towards him. It becomes natural. Most quirks are like a muscle to someone. Once it first activates and if it's an emitter or transformation, they're able to start using it almost automatically. Of course, they have to train to use it at first, but he gets the hang of it quickly. And he starts being able to pull the cork, or not cork, but his phone towards him. And then he starts focusing on other things, going heavier and heavier. Realizing that he doesn't have the same limitation as his mom. His quirk, although similar to hers, not only acts differently, but also has a different weight limit. He finds that most of the stuff he lifts doesn't really push him when it comes to, well, the weight. He can pull most of the stuff, he can push it, he can even levitate it, move it, and really any direction and he's like you know he had just awakened it for the first time and he's thinking what caused it and of course he realizes in only a few seconds it was the sludge villain attack his want for survival his want to be there with his mom and of course to live you know forced his quirk to awaken most quirks awaken accidentally but it is common for a lot of people to awaken their quirks in a stressful situation, or even for their quirks to, well, evolve or, you know, become stronger. So in that stressful situation, where he was trying to survive and live, he awakened his quirk for the first time, used it for the first time. Now, Deku would keep this a secret for about three days before he tells his mom. Now, she's at first wondering if he's playing, if she's you know, he's playing with her, because, you know, when he was younger, he was wondering if some of the stuff he could do was, you know, a quirk, and so did she. His analytical abilities? No, nope, he was just really smart, which didn't mean anything to most people. They didn't, they didn't care if he was smart, if it didn't have anything to do with a quirk. If he was, you know, able to take a beating from someone like Bakugo, they didn't care that, you know, he could withstand a lot of that from just sheer willpower and keep getting up? No, they didn't. It didn't have anything to do with the quirk, but when he showed her that he actually had a quirk, she was amazed and happy, genuinely happy, because when he was four and diagnosed, well, quirkless, she felt that she had failed him for not giving him a quirk. But not only does he have a quirk, it's similar to hers, but a lot more powerful. And she wonders when it first awakened, and he decides to come clean. And it tells her what happened a couple days ago. She, of course, is worried. But he says he's fine, saying nothing happened. And then he explains that he thinks it was simply the stress of this uh, situation. It allowed him to awaken his quirk for the first time. Because most people awaken it accidentally. That was still an accident, but the stress of it allowed him to use it properly you know, what, uh, easily. And then he used it again later that day when he tried to stop his phone from falling. And he's been practicing to do it on command since. Now, of course, she's like, okay, so he has a form of telekinesis. It's not a push, it's not a pull, it's not a stop things from, you know, floating in the air. No. He can really do any of that. It's just full telekinesis. Now, how strong is it? Well, he hasn't really pushed the limits of that. And she asks what he's going to call it. Now, Deku wonders what he should call it. Just straight up, you know, telekinesis? But 
no, no, he's not going to call out that. You know, a lot of quirks are pretty bland like that. The name, like Bakugo's explosions. What does it tell him or someone they can do? Can create explosions somehow. So he decides to go with a different name. He doesn't, he's not sure with what, but he'll give a different name. And that name won't really allude to what his quirk can do. It'll throw people off if they, you know, are able to see the name of his quirk or hear the name of his quirk and are wondering what it could do. But Deku, you know, from that point, builds a schedule on what he can do to, you know, uh, to start preparing for UA. And one of those things he does is clean up a beach, specific, uh, specifically Dagobah Beach. Now he would go there, and he would go there specifically for two things. To train his body, as although yes, he still has his quirk, he also has his body. He has two different things that he has neglected, or well, one thing that he's neglected nearly his entire life, training his body, and then he has his quirk, which he can train as well. Now, Deku can train his body intensely while at the beach, after doing roughly two weeks of intense research on the best ways to build muscle and what kind of physique he wants to go for. He decides to, instead of focus on his arms, his legs, he decides to, he's going to do a full body workout by picking up and cleaning the trash. He can then, once he's tired, take a break, use his quirk, and then go back to his body. Then quirk, body, quirk, body, quirk. And so on and so on. And he does this for the next 10 months. He changes his diet and he keeps going on and on. Now, because Deku actually does this, there are several different effects in this. His quirk, or at least the strength of his quirk, is developed by his mind. Most psychic-based quirks are. They're trained or, you know, uh, strengthened by the person's mind. And because of the constant, you know, mental berating and abuse that he's gone through from being bullied and so on, Deku has built up a very strong mind, able to take a lot of abuse and keep going. And, well, because of this, his quirk, when first awakened, was really strong. The stress that he goes through mentally, mental stress, and the mental fatigue and everything, and of course just using his quirk puts you know, stress and fatigue on his mind, but because of all of him, you know, going through all that for years, his quirk is really, really strong for just awakening, and he's able to lift, actually, how much should I make, make him be able to lift? He easily can lift about a person. I'm gonna say, for now, his max is only gonna be 500 pounds. Now, that doesn't really sound like much okay he can lift 500 pounds with his quirk now the thing is Deku can lift 500 pounds with a quirk his telekinesis quirk which he can push pull lift into the air move diagonally in his range which he has been slowly developing and figuring out which most people that have some form of telekinesis the further they are from uh, from them by moving an object, the worse their control until they have no none at all. Now, Deku is a certain range which he can do anything in. And I'm going to say that range is... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good range that isn't too strong right off the bat. I'm going to just go with 20 meters. In a diameter? Yeah, in a diameter of 20 meters, Deku has full control of his telekinesis. Outside of that, he can't really do much. Now, as he continues to work and use his quirk, he'll, of course, be able to do more and more. But then he decides, of course, one day he needs to register his quirk, and he does. He does it online, once he does a bit of research on how, and he decides his name is Quirk Ruler's Authority. Why Ruler's Authority? Simple. He has a 20 meter domain where, well, in that circle is, well, it's his domain. He does whatever he wants with it. He wants stuff to move, he'll move it. He wants it to get pushed, pulled, move up, move down. He can do it. He rules where stuff goes in there. So, ruler's authority. Now, of course, when he 
first used it, his quirk. He uses his hands to focus, but now he doesn't need that. Of course he can if he wants more precision, but now he can move multiple things at a time. We're going to say right now he can only move about five things at a time, but that's fine, as long as it doesn't go past his maximum of 500 pounds. Now, uh, what does Deku look like in this? Simple. Deku still has his mop of green hair, still, well, there, but actually longer, and because it's longer, it's not as curly as it normally was. Curly at the ends, yes, but almost pulled, well, not almost, but is pulled back into a small ponytail. He's actually grown taller, being, we're gonna say, on the dot, six foot. This is simply because of genetics. Genetics and, well, hard work. Deku, having done plenty of stretches when he was young, doing morning stretches for days, or not for days, but for years, and then eventually eating more and working out, allowed his body to actually, you know, grow into a higher, uh, higher, you know, height. Now, I'm trying to think of how tall he was before. I think Deku was only like 5'5 five, five or shorter in the actual series. So we're going to say in this before that, roughly like something like 5'8 or something like that. I'm actually pretty sure this is taller than Bakugo. But either way, now of course, he's going to grow an extra, what I said, he was like 6 foot on the dot, right? 5'8, so extra 4 inches? Whatever. He'll have a decent growth, uh, growth spurt. And although, yes, he is pretty tall, his he doesn't look like he has a lot of muscle on him, being a pretty lean build. Now, Deku, since he focused on completely training his quirk and his body, doesn't really have any way to fight. He can throw a punch and that's really it. He doesn't throw it correctly, but he does know he can add Ruler's authority to his punch, adding his physical strength with his telekinetic strength. And he decides that eventually he'll start creating unique moves with his telekinesis. But for now, he'll just roll with just moving things around. The day the UA entrance exam would come and he heads off. He would get there pretty early to find a good spot to sit before realizing, oh, it's organized by school. Which is pretty bad because he's right next to Bakugo. And of course, Bakugo is wondering why he's here. And, well, he knows that most people are going to be put into this area. Because a lot of them, yes, do want to be heroes. And some of them don't really want to, but are still here to see if they got a chance anyway. And just like he thought, yeah, the nerd, Deku, still wants to be a hero. Now, he hadn't really been paying attention to Deku, as after his comment about skydiving off the roof of the school, and, you know, him realizing UA was coming up, he's been training intensely, focusing on building up his explosions. But now that he looks at it, Deku's kind of taller, and although he is wearing his middle school uniform, it's not as well well fitting as it was. It was almost perfect on him, although he did admit it, perfect on him when it came to fitting uh, a few months ago. Now, it looked almost tighter. He assumes most of it's from him growing in, you know, height, but he also thinks maybe packed on a bit of muscle. So what? Uh, so what? Bit of muscle, growth spurt, that's it? He's not going to get into way. And although he wants to vocalize this, he doesn't and instead focuses on what President Mike is saying. Same for Deku. Now, of course, the explanation would come to an end, and they would head out to their different areas. Deku would eventually get to his group and would start stretching. As he's stretching, though, uh, he would start, you know, he would stop and start heading to the front of the group. He would notice, thanks to, well, a passive effect of ruler's authority, which is, he basically knows, or something that he developed almost accidentally, and always has activated, is he knows where everything is in his domain. Basically, oh, you're over here, you're to his right, and you're walking in a certain way. He, he knows that. So he can feel someone, you know, walking up behind him with a bit of speed and reaching out for him. But he just moves out of the way so that he can't grab him. They, of course, keep reaching and trying to grab him, but he just keeps moving. They, of course, realize that this has to be their quirk and decides to just, you know, reach out with as much speed as possible to grab his shoulder, but their hand is pushed back by, to them, an invisible field, but to Deku, it's, of course, 
you know, ruler's authority. Now, he'd keep walking, and eventually he would stop in front of everyone. He's there, some people were looking at him because they noticed the guy trying to grab him, but being pushed back. And he's now in front of the group. The other guy had stopped, realizing that, oh, he's just going to the front of the group. Some wanted to know if, you know, they had previous history, or this guy was just, you know, trying to talk to him, or what, but eventually they just stop on that. They're not trying to focus there anyway. So, we would decide to, you know, they would decide to focus, and as they're focusing, out of nowhere, you know, they'd hear President Mike yell, go, 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 as, you know, there's no starting timer for a hero. They, of course, would look forward, wondering when the gate's gonna open, but it's already open. Now, of course, as soon as Mike said go, Deku, he was off, he was running. He's definitely not the fastest there, he's not even in the top 5 or even top 10 with just his normal speed. Because, well, he simply hasn't been training speed or anything like that. He's just been training his body. He has been doing running and cardio and all that, but he's not super fast. Just making sure, you know, uh, he had a decent amount of stamina. But he's, well, quickly went from 1st to like 10th to 11th. And he's thinking, I need to go faster. If I want to get robots, I need to get faster. Even if they're in my range, some people are still going to be able to steal them because they have more range than him. So, he needs to think of a way to go faster. So how, how can I get you know more force out of this? And then he thinks about it. Simple. He starts using uh, Ruler's Authority, and although, yes, in a sense, he could pick himself up and move himself around, that immediately takes quite a, you know, quite a bit of his, you know, weight away that he can pick stuff up with, but instead he decides that this way will be much better, it doesn't just straight up give away his quirk, and he can both use it for multiple things, he can use it for additional speed, and additional strength in an attack, and this method that he's about to use is simply, well, adding ruler's authority to his feet, or well, his legs, building the force up in or around his legs, and then using it to push off the ground harder allowing him to build up a decent amount of speed. He's not, you know, immediately going to get faster. He's, you know, starts off slow. He starts off slow, building up more and more speed. Doing, you know, not doing, but getting better. Adjusting the speed and trying to get faster. Of course, he decides that this is a decent speed. Not being the fastest, second, or even third, he's at best the fifth fastest. But then he decides, you know, to break off from everyone else, heading into an alley. As he's heading into an alley, he is approached, or not approached, but stopped by a, oh, was it, say, one-pointer or whatever. Of course, he is stopped by one-pointer, and as he's, you know, about to, you know, be attacked by it, he could, of course, feel it and, you know, know it was coming, what it was going to do and everything, so he, of course, moved out of the way. Dodging, and then immediately... He would jump in the air, jumping way higher than you would expect for someone without, you know, any form of enhanced physical strength, jumping on top of the head, and with as much force as possible with both legs, jumping, using Willis Authority to, again, enhance his body. And this force alone is enough to just push the robot off balance and all of its weight, with, and of course the force of gravity and it being pushed down, would force its head into the ground breaking it, or at least breaking, you know, the head, or at least the camera and all that, making it unable to function properly, giving him a point. Now, Deku would go, and he would start getting better and better. He starts learning how to use this quirk in a fight, and at first, when looking at him, you're like, okay, he doesn't really have any experience in combat, he doesn't really know how to use his quirk in combat that well, but he's getting better, he's getting sharper, he's showing that he's growing very fast. And of course, one person, or at least two people actually, pick up on this. Not in the, you know, area where they're being tested, but in the area with the judges. One person, being Nezu, the principal, would of course see this kid and would look up on the little tablet in front of him who he is. And he would realize this kid is a genius. He's a prodigy in the making. He has not had his quirk long, not even a year. He awakened it uh, by what he has in this information nearly 10 months ago when a villain attacked him, 
and from there, he had been training to use it. And of course, him having the perfect rector that, that he has, has never been in a fight, has never been in any physical or uh, altercation of any kind, so this is his first time ever actually using his quirk in any form of combat or combat scenario. So, just seeing what he could do now is kind of amazing the principle. He can kind of understand how he's so fast. Okay, he's using his quirk to propel him forward. He's using his quirk to add force to his punches, his kicks. He's throwing the opponents off with as much force as possible, adding to his, you know, decent but not super large amount of physical strength. And then, what else he's doing? Uh, then... He starts getting weapons. How is he getting weapons? Simple. He takes pieces of the robots, small little metal pieces that are around the joints, to allow them to move properly, and starts using them almost at the, as if they're a blade. Almost like a dagger, actually. He'd grab them, crushing part of it to form a better grip, and using wire to wrap around it in only, only a couple seconds with ruler's authority, and then adding what is the equivalent to an edge of psychic energy to it allowing him to pierce, well, the robots. Now, of course, he's not even focusing on being precise. He's just brutally attacking the weak points of the robots, their joints, their, uh, what is it, their cameras. Those are the weak points that they really have. In between the plates of armor, he's going for them. Now, this would be a simple move, which, of course, if you guys haven't realized, I'm literally stealing a lot of this from another, uh, another series which I'm not going to name, but this would be a, because I've already named it several times, but this would be a move that he would eventually call Vital Strike, which is simply him aiming for the vitals or very weak, the very weak points of an opponent. Now him doing what he was doing, taking weapons or making makeshift weapons, running and enhancing his speed and strength, and using his quirk to throw off opponents allows him to get better, and, or not better, but more and more points. Until eventually, the test is nearly over, with only two minutes left. Or not two minutes, but five minutes left. Of course, as there's only five minutes, out of nowhere, rumbling would happen. Rumbling, a uh, rubble falling, the ground shaking, and people running. Running and running. Deku decides to just run with him. He thinks he has a decent amount of points, and he knows that even if he doesn't make it in, to UA, or at least he'll make it into UA, but he knows if he doesn't make it into the hero course, there is a way for him to stoke it in. If he makes it into general ed, which he is going to make it into either way, if he doesn't make it into uh, the hero course, if he does well in the sports festival with enough training, he can actually get swapped into the hero course. So he would decide to just run. He'll take out any robots he sees on the way, but that's it. He'll run. Now, he's running with the rest of the people till out of nowhere, he hears someone calling for help. He would hear someone calling for help and would turn around to see a girl, of course, uh, stuck under some rubble. Now, she is stuck under some rubble and he starts running towards her. She is out of his range, very far out of his range, but he starts getting closer and closer, adding more force to, well, his enhanced uh, speed, which... We're just going to call sprint, because it's literally what he's doing. He's sprinting while enhancing his speed with ruler's authority. And he is almost there. He gets the girl with only a few feet in front of her, and he's tired. He could easily have stopped and then used ruler's authority to, you know, uh, to get the rubble off of her and then pick her up. But he needs to assess the damage and see what's going on. He would, of course, realize that she just has a sprained angle in only a few seconds, pulls the rubble off of her, and gets the biggest piece, actually putting her on it, and then lifts, you know, rubble itself. And of course, this actually is getting him close to his limit in terms of well weight. This gets him close to 500. The girl not wearing, uh, weighing that much, but the rubble she's laying on currently, weighing a decent amount. And then gets close to his 500 pound limit. Now, he would start running with a rubble floating uh, right behind him. And he's tired. He's out of breath. His, you know, breathing is all messed up. Simple, or simply by the fact that he, you know, wasn't focusing on it anymore. And he had stopped enhancing himself, you know, using all of his focus on the, 
uh, rubble that he's carrying with a girl on it until the exam, you know, uh, bell is called, the siren is released, and the exam is over. We would then see Deku slowly lay the girl down, checking if she's okay, seeing that she's okay, with a rec uh, recovery girl coming over a couple of minutes later, seeing that she's okay, and as she's taking care of the girl, Deku would walk up and, or not walk up, but get up and leave. He'd walk eventually to the bus, get taken to the UA campus, change into his normal middle school clothes, and then head off home. About a week later, he'd be receiving a letter congratulating him on getting into Class 1A of UA and welcome, uh, welcoming him to the Hero Course. Now, Deku did, or well, placed in terms of villain points, in the middle. Now, that wasn't super impressive until you look at the facts. He's only had his quirk for less than a year, and he was improvising just everything he was doing right then and there in the test. And then, one thing, a trait that he showed that no one else did, the trait of a true hero, self-sacrifice. Even if he himself didn't really get hurt, he was willing to rush to the girl to see if she was okay to save her, which did put him in danger. So he got extra points. We're going to say, in terms of villain points, he got roughly... 40-ish, right? I actually don't remember what the points were, but I think that's a decent amount. So 40-ish, we're going to add an extra 20 for rescue, and that's going to give him, we're going to say 45 and then about 20, so uh, yeah, 65 total points, which pushes him altogether very close, or not very close, but I think about third place, I'm not 100% sure, but he's close there anyway. So seeing how well he did in the exam, he's ecstatic. He, well, really only shows emotion around his mom, but even then it's a very subdued emotion. And for the first time in a long time, she generally, or genuinely, in Komodoria, genuinely sees her son happy, giddy with excitement. He got into his dream school, and now has a real chance at becoming a hero. And that's where we ended off here. This is a 40 minute long video. Hope you guys have are, are doing well. Hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye guys and have a wealth of time. Bye.